Guten Abend, good evening everyone. Welcome back to the Michelangelo stage. We are continuing now with a one hour session on video technology. The next presentation is called A Way to 360 Degree Cinema Projection Strategies for the Story of JC. Professor Eberhard Hasche in the middle from the University of Applied Sciences Brandenburg and Anna Vukova Voza. Voza? <laughs> and Rob Falsetti, they're both from the multimedia production company Shaking Foundation. Foundations will introduce their own developed technology. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As everywhere in uh, visual effects and other multimedia uh, industry, we are showing something, it's called a teaser, uh, to give you an impression what it is all about first. to rule the world instead of these puppets, don't you? I can make it possible. You know that. You don't need to answer now. Think about it. We'll talk again. Okay, what you saw is uh, some impression, impression of about uh, these uh, live performance. And uh, before we started, let's bring in. Okay, um, the presentation is about a way to 360 degree cinema. It's uh, projection strategies for the story of GC. We will not talk about hardware. We will not talk about that we have uh, 250 projectors and projecting uh, something. We are talking about what's behind, behind uh, the technology. We uh, usually uh, talking about uh, uh, files, more or less, you will see. And um, I like to introduce uh, friends of mine, um, Anna Vukovoyat and uh, Rob Falsetti. And uh, they are talking about uh, some short impressions about what is the story of GC. What did we see in the trees? Okay. 
Okay, right. Uh, hello, everybody. What we just seen was the teaser for the story of JC, a rock opera that will be staged in Berlin next year. Okay, and now my colleague Anna will give you a brief introduction on the opera. Yes. Well, uh, what we want to bring uh, with the story of JC uh, is something uh, that uh, refers and involves a whole humanity, its destiny. The story of JC brings uh, on the scene of the world the awareness of uh, the multidimensional reality, the a reality in which we live, yet we are not completely aware of it. That reality is visible and invisible. The knowledge about it is very important because it has the consequence on our life and uh, what in the end will be the outcome of our life. That is of our destiny. When we started thinking about making and telling the story of JC, we knew in the first place that it has to be a rock opera live show. But we felt uh, immediately that it shouldn't be uh, done in a classical way, not even in a way it is done today uh, in the theater, that we have to go further. Uh, we actually wanted to involve the audience uh, in a powerful and new live experience that we started in our mind and in our vision calling live movie experience. Of course, uh, we were aware that uh, such an ambitious vision we cannot achieve without involving uh, technology to get into tight cooperation with the art, artistic concept and the creative production all together. And we started looking for different options within technology. Okay. Having an experience from over, about over 20 years of theatre, um, this is a very challenging thing. Because um, there are a lot of things involved, singers, choir, a band, sound design, sound effects, big and huge uh, visualization, projection, light and so on. And um, in, in theater and w within the rehearsals, every of these has to fit into an artistic and technol technological uh, concept. And they have to be synchronized. And they don't have to come uh, in, in, in each other's way. They have to make space and place that other can uh, and evolve. And that made, you have to do a, a lot of changes on the spot. Not uh, years of rendering and such things that we have, need something that is, is, is extremely flexible. So what are the possibilities? So first, of course, if the uh, word movie comes, are film sequences. Film sequences are very fine, but uh, I fear they may conflict with theater uh, aesthetics. You can see the difference between film and theater, the way actors are acting. In film, they are more natural on the stage, they do huge gestures and everything. This may fit for the one and other, but for a, a, a total uh, concept, it may not be right. Short moment. Maybe it will be better. Okay. And the next thing is uh, the all around 3D and uh, very popular today, even film goes uh, stereo 3D and things. For us, 3D is, uh, does not fit the message and is from the appearance a little bit outdated. It may be sound like a provocation, but uh, if you we are going a little further in the presentation, you may uh, uh, think that we, we are right. Basically, there are two looks in 3D. One of the uh, more Pixar-driven for children audience, and the other is uh, heavy uh, global illumination, photorealistic and things. In my mind, it's not flexible enough. So what is our choice in the first place? Our choice is 2.5D compositing. And uh, this is very flexible, but it has the best of both ways, 2D and 3D. Basically, it's uh, um, a rough 
the 3D ge geometry used and with a lot of concepts around maybe 12 or uh, 48 or 50 concepts uh, dealing with this. Very modern, very new and very heavy development is going on. Uh, in the center of this uh, uh, development is a, a software called Nuke by the Foundry. Everyone uses it and in a, a very a special way lot of uh, community behind it is something like an open source is not it's commercial but uh, you can uh, bring in your ideas and so on very innovative flexible extremely flexible because uh, you can do something in 2d and it looks like 3d and so on uh, and cost effective so I got something in here and uh, tried to find out something and I got this the sky this came to me and I uh, tried to uh, do something with this. I call it the thing and I uh, do uh, uh, say what it is um, in, in a minute. First experiments with this. This is the, uh, what they gave me, the uh, projection uh, system uh, in the first place. There are huge uh, screens, 15 meter long, three of this and uh, projected from behind that the actors have space to act in front of them. Uh, I first applied something, it's called rolling down. I applied this and uh, let it roll. Oh, something. So. Okay, yes, okay, you see it rolling down here, and, uh, okay, no, it's the other, it's the, uh, uh, okay, I see here, it is the, uh, a shot, it's called uh, pivot reveal, you uh, have something, uh, and you are turning around, and then suddenly someone comes in your attention, and this is, moment it is a car. Notice how long it takes to get this. It's, it's a very fast movement, but if you come slowly, the audience is shown the desert and it's expecting the desert. And then suddenly you come to the car and immediately the audience thinks, why is it there? What is it doing in the desert? What has uh, what's come out in the next? And I found it a very interesting thing because it's so much uh, space to uh, perform before coming to the uh, to the car and uh, then I thought well it would really nice to find out if the car could move but in, in, uh, this is, is nothing so really new because it's something like uh, quick time VR and things on a very big space and the next task was to make the car move inside this so we came to the conclusion that uh, this thing is worth another rehearsing so and if it's worse I'm going a little bit into what it is it's called the let long map what is it a let long map is a uh, abbreviation from latitude longitude and it comes uh, it's a geographic coordinate system that enables every location on earth to be specified by a set of numbers and or uh, letters. It's from Wikipedia definition and uh, what it says is, is the uh, polar coordinates of some point on a, a spherical element or the earth in this case. Uh, if you roll up a texture applied to the sphere, you have this kind uh, on the left side from me. Um, is uh, some kind of a rectangle image which has the whole world in it, and uh, it is yeah roughly uh, the texture. And where does it come from? It's heavily used in uh, computer graphics, in image-based lighting, in 3D applications. It is mostly used to capture the original light from the scene. You take from scene, everybody does it, and uh, capture all the light conditions, uh, mostly in shots outside, but inside as well. And they are brought in and uh, home, and then they can apply it to uh, 3D models, and they are lit as they would be in the shot. In the shot. This is very common and very uh, often used, and without it, no uh, convincing 3D making is uh, possible. Uh, I show you some uh, short uh, explanation. 
uh, this is some basic setup. You have uh, the car in this case, it's the model. You have the geometry. Uh, it, it could be a sphere, but in this case it would be a gym and uh, it's more a rectangle thing. Then you have the match move camera, that means the camera that is in live movie moving around is applied to 3D, it is calculated how they move and every uh, move they made are applied to the 3D camera. Then it moves and shots the uh, 3D model and brings in to the film. That is nothing new. Uh, you have a projector, and this is in, uh, in, uh, interesting, in this case it's a spherical uh, projector and projected the light of the scene on the geometry. And the geometry then is lighting the uh, car in this case, and you notice the uh, color bleeding going on reflections, and if you render it out to all the things, it would look, look like this, and you, if you move it, the reflections will move as well. This is where it comes from. So, uh, the, the basic thing, what we are interested in, is that in this lead long map, you have the whole world. You have everything, every object, every light. And this is why it is so important for us, because theater is the whole world. Right. Uh, we like this statement very much, uh, and, we think it, uh, and we think it applies a lot to uh, our days. Uh, and... Uh, we think it's very important to state it because uh, the story of JC uh, wants to show in this multi-dimensional reality that there is a conflict going on. But the conflict is going on uh, in uh, the invisible part of the reality uh, that is uh, heavily uh, influencing what is going on in what we see and what we experience. So in the story of JC, the world actually is uh, breathing its last, it's collapsing, uh, and uh, actually this is the direct outcome of the conflict that we cannot see. Uh, we uh, uh, want to involve the audience in this uh, experience and, uh, because everyone is involved in it, the whole world. So I'm uh, relating to, the, to what uh, we started saying, that the, the theater is the whole world. And so we very much needed uh, a technique and a technology that can show all the time the whole world and the feel and the look of it. Uh, a short uh, uh, example that we uh, did, we did, uh, it, it's not a final result, it's only some uh, draft uh, quality playing around with saying how it uh, looks, how it may uh, uh, fit to the stage and so on. And, and this we saw it in a teaser and I show it again. Uh, this is uh, basically some moving around and shows the two realities. One. Uh, the physical reality is one uh, above and it's easily uh, uh, get the transition now here at this point to some 3D work you may experience this is of course not 2D because you have a parallax shift inside and it makes it a possible possible. So, that we came to the conclusion that it's a, a nice thing that we can uh, move farther we can, um, uh, the next point is make the let long map yourself this is a very straightforward process and it's not easy and uh, I get to point it out there are basically three ways how to get it. The first is uh, shooting a mirror ball, some kind of a Christmas a ball and sphere in front of you and you have everything. Um, even the backside is very tiny on the side. It's not useful for us because it's, it has a messy quality. The next one is uh, Fish eyes, it's very popular uh, among uh, people of uh, agencies uh, who do car advertising, uh, uh, bring in a 3D model of the car, photographing something and bring it in. In my eyes, as, uh, uh, we are investigating it heavily. It's a little bit uh, a problem of the, um, of the resolution. We will see what we get with our method, method uh, a very heavy uh, resolution. We are using something I called it a dome of cards. How to get it? We are shooting a panorama of the scene with a panorama head. It's a technical device. It looks like this. 
you have to have something, but because you cannot put the camera on the tripod, because you don't have to get a parallax inside the shot. That means the noodle point, the point you are turning around, your device has to be exactly there where the main lens inside the, the lens system is. And you have uh, uh, carefully adjusted and then turning around. Uh, there's a little knob uh, here where you can control how uh, big the movement is. With this is a 30 degree, 10 shots in a, a, a 36 degree away. And it's, uh, you, you, uh, yeah, you move it, shot it and so on. And it looks like this, 10 shots is nothing fancy. And then point it upward 60 degree, 60 degree downwards and you get this. The problem now is, and there comes the flexibility, is usually you use some stitching program to so do uh, some uh, a movement together, so you stitching it together, and then you end up with an automatically process. We use something uh, inside uh, the foundry's Nuke. This is a very flexible card system. A unique thing, and it's absolutely easy to bring the cards into this. And in the end, it looks like this is a dome of cards, the straight one around, the overlapping made out. It uh, uses some uh, process that uh, relates to the focal length and, of course, the... Yes. You see it here moving around, then it's uh, easy. You put uh, it together into a, a merge or a scene and then apply a render at this and it renders directly to a let long make. Of course, you have to tweak it, to have paint out, paint out the shadow of the operator, the uh, tripod and so on. The best thing, the resolution of this, we shoot it with a Canon uh, EOS uh, 5D Mark II lots of numbers and we end up to have a resolution of the map in the end of 25k that means 25,000 pixels this is huge and you have a lot of flexibility zooming in taking something out and this with fish eye and uh, if you're using this we would end up with an, an, around 8k it's enough maybe it's uh, better we will uh, research some with some red cameras maybe it would be a, a, a better resolution for this but it is a, a time-consuming process. It is not, not so straightforward, but it has a lot of uh, flexibility. So, this is a map which is not moving. But with this technology, it's absolutely easy bringing in uh, elements that move. It's absolutely straightforward. You use this camera which is able to photograph and to film at the same time position it on the one point take a photo press the video button and film this and you have uh, that's why i use these uh, 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 funny windmills because they were turning around big things because in the map everything is very tiny so and this uh, is what we did, how we did it, uh, shooting scenes as movies and cards as well, and so you can change it then. So it looks like these are movies. This is not stills, they are moving, we will see it. And then, and this is a nice thing, if you render out 8 or 10 or 16K uh, elements, it's, it takes a time. What we here are using, uh, we take the still, render it out one time, and then compose the uh, elements over it, and it looks something like this. It's uh, only, yeah, maybe <laughs> you see something moving in the uh, elements or, or, or not. Uh, it's, it's basically uh, every movement is rendered out as a let long map. But we go inside, don't worry. Uh, with the next, it's moving. Hopefully, yes. This is a bubble, this is a sphere, and we are going in the sphere and see it moving. It is not shot on location, it is done at home uh, with a camera, a 3D camera moving inside the bubble, and you can film all out. And remember, you can render it out and apply it to a projector everywhere on the stage. You can as have windows to the map as you want. And this is what we find very, very flexible and very convincing.
So this is inside, you see it moves. The camera movement is arbitrary. You can do every you want, ever, at all time. You don't have to go down. I did it to show the, the concept and it's, everything is moving. And uh, we will go then a little longer the way and you can bring in everything. You can change everything. It's basically all 2D. And this is why it is so extremely flexible. Right. Uh, I want to immediately say that when we started talking about uh, 2.5D uh, compositing, that we got uh, more and more exciting. Uh, because uh, we very much need flexible visuals in the story of JC. Uh, remember that we have a multi-dimensional reality and uh, the switch between the two uh, realities needs to be uh, very quick uh, or very strange uh, in the right moment uh, and it's really hardly, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't obtain it very quickly uh, by filming it previously. Uh, uh, also, one reality needs to be enhanced at a certain point. Good. And uh, after that, uh, uh, I want to mention then uh, this conf this conflict, this conflict that we are uh, we are bringing in the story of J in the, co the concept of the story of JC uh, is uh, is immediately seen in the in the scene because we are having the world uh, that is almost a desert and a strange world. Uh, something is happening that uh, we didn't see before and uh, so we also have to come out with the visuals that uh, okay we are halfway with the visuals uh, that you saw today we're still developing it and so we are thinking even uh, in the artistic way starting from the technology so for us it's extremely challenging okay. so the point is why do we do we need such flexibility because and here uh, is the point, theater is not real life, it's hyper life. Film tends to be more real life, it's filmed life. We need something that is more uh, in, in, in artistically driven, it is translated from real life to stage. I uh, uh, like to show you two uh, images here. Uh, one is from Wikipedia, uh, it's about London. This is what London thinks that are the sites that everybody must have seen. Yeah. It's familiar to most everyone, and uh, Sorry? yeah, it's typical. And uh, another thing is uh, from the closing ceremony, uh, uh, ceremony of the Olympic Games, and the same things are brought on stage. But look how they changed. Here is a, a very real the the eye in the middle, uh, the uh, uh, Big Ben at the left, and the uh, famous. Uh, uh, a tower above uh, St. Andrew uh, University and everything he brought in it, but it has changed, it is smaller and it's uh, not into life, it is hyper life. And if we film something, we have to translate it to the theater. And with these 2D things, it's much, much more uh, flexible. Right. Uh, we, we have just stated this. Uh, that uh, the story of GC needs a certain desert-like look and feel because the world is deserted and coming to an end. So basically we'll have a, a reality painted in our own way, but it's still our reality. Uh, and um, the story of GC needs, as we said, enhancement on one reality and a shift between the realities. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I show you some of the process here. Uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, first thing I came up with. And uh, you see the basic uh, geometrical lines in there. And this is important. You uh, shoot something what comes in mind, what you think, what would be uh, um, appropriate for that what we're doing, some uh, buildings and something. And you have here basically only a street going on. But uh, it's uh, uh, because of the nature of the uh, map, it's uh, uh, not easy to uh, paint this out, but you can uh, transform it into cube map. It's uh, possible, and it is uh, automatically not straight, not uh, bold. It's straight, and it's easy to paint in. And this is what we painted in, only for demonstration here. And this is what you saw in the in the teaser. It's uh, totally coming out of this map. And if you have such a, 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 a huge resolution, it's a very fine uh, to deal with this and you can do everything with this 
So the next point, which is uh, important as well, is that the story of GC is interactive. You can move the map around because you have everything. You have 360 degree, but you can make your actors move this. And this is another very important uh, uh, thing, life and interactive. So this is not rendered before, it's directly driven out of the uh, map. Yes, exactly, uh, and uh, not only interactive in that way, because uh, just uh, to bring you back on the stage and say yeah, there will be dancing, there will be uh, acting, the, there will be music going on, even in live performance. Uh, if we can imagine that all that can interact with, with the visuals that are our world, uh, it's, uh, it's really becoming a, a fantastic opportunity to experiment uh, in uh, like what it feels when the physical reality uh, interacts uh, with the multimedia. And this is exactly what we are planning to do. Maybe even at a certain point the audience will be able directly to interact, but we are still not at that point. I don't know, we can't tell you that uh, right now. Well, it's important that the actor can manipulate the map uh, in real time, interactively, that we can show it or hide it, uh, depends on what we want to do. Uh, uh, of course, pointing out that the one who is moving uh, the map is in control of that reality, which is uh, important. And uh, in the end, uh, that clearly shows the conflict. Yes, there are different realities, one on the stage and maybe the other behind. Maybe uh, what's behind in the projection may be go inside of any one of the actors that you can, uh, and otherwise uh, is not easy to show on the theater. Most in e is even in film not easy to show. In film it's mostly the audio, the sound uh, uh, track is used for doing this. It's called a meta theater by the way. Uh, so, let's come to uh, the conclusion of the technical thing and the final uh, advantages of the Letlong map. The Letlong map has all the projection inside and you can decide later which are the windows to the map and which, uh, 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 yeah, which parts you want to show on stage. Here you can easily bring in uh, 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 screens on the side, on top and behind the people what you want. You don't have to project everything and every time, but you have the ability to maybe want to show only on the, the left side. You don't have to shoot anything else. You adjust and you maybe your hers and maybe some of the light, I'll tell it later. The next thing is you can show that the whole world is changing or collapsing in this case. Maybe an earthquake. You can rotate this slowly a long time and then bring in and in, in the moment the map enters the, the scene something is destroyed you don't have to tell or you don't have to do some fancy 3D animation uh, fire simulation and things you can show it then you can compose it in 2D and, and everything and the last thing uh, before we uh, come to the conclusion of the artistical side uh, the map can change here uh, directly during rehearsing. Maybe you have this image and the uh, director says, oh, this is not good. I want to have, and this point, immediately, you have two minutes time, I want to have cracks and it should be a little bit more strange, a little bit more coming to the point. And this is absolutely easy for rehearsing. You don't have uh, to bring in all the movement. You can render it later, but you can uh, go it in Photoshop mask it out, bring in only for the uh, button here for the for the way and uh, bring in something like uh, a filter on it and then you can see oh, yes this, this is it what it is and then uh, bring in all the other things you can uh, change the movement you can bring through two elements maybe something like this and I put it in here uh, because to show the last thing, it is not uh, in front. It's just something of a, a distortion inside the movement of the mills. Remember, this is a, a 3D element. Uh, 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 if you apply it to a sphere, you can then uh, apply a card in you. And this is the beauty of 2D compos uh, uh, 2 and 5D compositing, you bring in a card that matches exactly the directions where the uh, circle of the mills is and then uh, render it out. It will, you can bring the animation which is in front, which is uh, centered, and then it's moving around and all the distortion is applied immediately. This is why it is so extremely flexible. 
So now we come to the conclusion because we have not so much time. Right. So uh, uh, definitely the story of JC gave us uh, a big task. And uh, we are really uh, uh, happy uh, and uh, flattered that we can uh, be in this uh, innovative process uh, of uh, developing of 360 degrees projection technology, which will allow us to show uh, something unseen and uh, maybe I can boldly say unheard of. Uh, the immersive experience uh, uh, on, the sea, uh, on the scene of the world as a whole uh, will be transferred uh, uh, to the audience. We will all be a part of it. We are already part of it. Also, the us who are making the, the story of JC. So uh, it's like a story that uh, is now happening and will happen in the future. Uh, and of course, because of the technology, the art, the artistic pr process will be enhanced. Uh, Therefore, live movie experience uh, is something uh, I hope uh, uh, we can all look forward to see. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. Are there questions? Um, we, I will uh, pass the microphone here and go to the <laughs> normal things. Okay. So, we still have some time for a couple of questions. Hello, so you said a lot about the uh, advantages of this new technology. Are there any disadvantages too? Are there any disadvantages to those, th this new technology? No, if there are disadvantages. If there are any problems, something negative about it. She asks if there are any disadvantages of the technology. Uh, it's, it's, it depends. Of course, everything has uh, disadvantages. In this, uh, in, in movie making, one of the most important things they are after is uh, parallax change. That means uh, everything has to move for the eye to get busy. The eye performs some uh, small movements. It's called saccades. And uh, if it sees everything at one glance, it's tired and does not want to look farther. That is everything is moving, changing. We don't need this because we have the main, main movement on the stage. So we uh, want to avoid this because it would come uh, in, in one in the other way. Now the actor may be... Uh, yeah, uh, being overrided by something and you have to be uh, uh, more in, in a mood or, uh, in the, or the actor give way to force the projections. This is uh, the process on live performance. I mean, uh, of course, uh, we are talking a lot about that, but uh, and you also saw it uh, on the video uh, that at a certain point the camera going down. Uh, this is where we mix it with 3D, and actually, uh, there are 3D and 2.5D. They uh, cooperate very well, uh, and uh, so we are not shunning from uh, 3D, but we want to use it uh, with, um, I mean, carefully and where it is needed. So it's still we didn't find a way how to go down uh, with the camera as you would do it in, in 3D. Yes. Two other disadvantages. Uh, it's huge. A painting in Photoshop at 8K with uh, uh, 8K with uh, uh, 32 bit uh, EXR uh, is so slow you don't want to do it. So uh, we don't have to do a 32 bits because it's not high dynamic range. It is not needed. Because it's, and and uh, uh, yes, and the other thing, it is of course very curved. You have to be extremely experienced. On the, you have to do something, and this is what I left out. You can easily render it out as a cube map, maybe down. If you it's pointing down, it is very easy because you have a flat. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, flat, flat surface where you can paint out very well. But you have to be careful where the uh, sides of the cube are. You have to uh, yeah, make sure that you have flat things to paint. And you yeah. have. Um, the flyer says um, it, uh, it will be shown in Berlin 2013. Uh, do you have any idea about the venue? Yeah, 
We have a, a new idea. Well, it is not really new, but we like to do it in a tent because a tent offers a lot of advantages. The tent can be moved and it's, it's very uh, flexible. And has, and also has height. Yeah. Also maybe maybe we want to have something uh, like in an IMAX theater. In Germany, there's only one left in Speyer, which goes here uh, around. In Berlin, it's only flat. But maybe we want something. I don't know. The, the uh, teaser is made for the arena in, in Trepto. Yeah, but for, it, for our uh, feeling, it's too slow, too, too low. Only five meters or so. And this is exactly. The tent can be projected. I mean, it can, can really respond to all our needs. So, to answer your question, it will be a tent that will be located somewhere in Berlin. Okay. Um, uh, what, and what about the, a date? Is there a date so far? Or, or some time span? Well, yes, yeah, it should be autumn next year, in uh, 2013. Okay, thanks. Welcome. I, I got to say, the uh, event moves slowly <laughs> around <laughs> because it's very, it's, it's uh, very challenging. And uh, by providing this uh, uh, presentation, we uh, uh, find out how complex this everything is. And uh, I hope it is we made it uh, clear because it, it, it's, it's, it's the main thing is bringing visuals on a photorealistic base into see it. As it is not an easy task. Not at all. Yes, I wanted to ask you regarding um, the interactive map. I didn't understand that. You said the, the, the map can be interactive, so you're referring this to the audience, meaning the audience being able to interact with the map, with the projection. Do you mean that? <laughs> this is difficult for me to imagine. Uh, so so what, do you, what did you mean with yes, that? Yes, uh, first, the actor can. Yes, it can do it with a uh, normal joystick. Yes, there are only two movements, one up and uh, to the side. It's uh, only maybe, uh, yes, maybe you can uh, move in, 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 in a C direction, but only as uh, only uh, a mo more or less a two-dimensional movement to the, to, to the map. And you can do it with a joystick. We don't need something fancy like a kinetic or so And to the audience, there are very uh, few uh, elements known to do something. One which is working very fine is pointing lasers to somewhere. O audience has lasers and points there, and they say are measured. And uh, about these elements, say, you can uh, uh, do something out of the data. So you have you have to train the audience. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> of course. It's uh, I, I personally won't go that far, but uh, maybe say something comes out with something very interesting, and then it would work. Yes. We still have about five more minutes for questions, so 